about my journey that I started seven years ago. Uh, I was very passionate about not letting waste go to waste. Um, my whole focus in this new company that I started, and I can't really see the site, but <laughs> I hope you all can see it properly. Um, you know, so I'm gonna start with a statement here that we waste a lot of food all over the world. It's incredible the amount of food waste that we have. Um, it's hard to put numbers in perspective. Uh, 40 million tons of food waste a year. That's just a tremendous amount of food waste. Um, a third of the food waste, food that we produce, actually gets wasted. Imagine that. Um, it's per person, you start to talk about half a pound a day of food waste that we, we have. So most of the food waste, where does it go? It goes straight into the landfills. And landfills are actually getting filled up. Um, most of our landfills are, at this point, we don't, we're not creating new landfills, the existing landfills once they get filled up, it's really getting hard to start new landfills. So it's a problem. How much waste are we putting in those landfills? And so imagining that a third of the food waste is getting wasted, what can we do about it? How do we rekindle the fire and do something about it? Um, the other thing that happens with the food waste, it's not just the fact that we're wasting it, but also creating a lot of greenhouse gases. The greenhouse gases, it's carbon that's heating up our atmosphere. So a tremendous amount of that carbon that's in the food waste is actually heating up our atmosphere. The second challenge that we have is animal manure. Human manure for sure is one thing, you know, human waste is certainly one thing, but animal manure is another big, big piece of this whole waste story. This is a picture of a lagoon where dairy manure goes in and it's stored until it's ready to be spread on the fields. And while it's stored, it's emitting greenhouse gases, carbon again. So what we have decided, what we decided about seven years ago was, and these things are not popping up at the right spot, but what can we do with the food waste and the animal manure? And how can we tackle both of these problems at the same time? And one of the very um, natural ways one can tackle this problem is through anaerobic digestion. Anaerobic digestion means digesting carbon in the absence of oxygen. So if you take the carbon in the absence of oxygen, you actually produce what they call biogas. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about it. And that biogas, um, takes basically the carbon, the organics sitting in that manure and food waste gets converted into biogas. Um, and that biogas can be converted to renewable electricity. So imagine making power from waste. It can also be converted to renewable natural gas. So that is the natural gas that you're using in your houses to heat the houses. Um, the other piece of this whole story is that manure, the post-digestion, um, the liquid and the solid are also not going waste. We're taking the liquid and land applying it as fertilizer in, on, as we grow crops. And the solids go as beddings for the cows. So in this, we're not wasting anything out of that waste. So we are accelerating the conversion of renewable energy from waste using this process. And the mission of Agrid Energy, as Suhan said, was to actually take that to help create higher sustainability for our dairy farms. Um, so this is a picture of one of my projects. And we basically try to take the farm waste, this is the dairy farm, take the manure, inject it into the digester, this is the food waste tanks, the trucks come and drop off the food waste. This is like the grease from Burger Kings and McDonald's. We get a lot of grease that goes in here. The gas from the digester goes into the engine and produces electricity and the electricity goes into the grid right there. And 
the heat coming out of the engine is used to heat the barns, heat the water. Now the farm doesn't have to burn any wood, any kind of oils. There they are energy independent. And that, that digestate then is spread on crop plants to use as fertilizer. So basically our mission is to produce electricity not just so it can support the dairy farm, but 90% of our electricity supports the electrical needs on the municipalities around us. So that dairy, dairy farm is actually now helping the community that it's in. We also help by reducing odor. So when you are by a dairy farm, you probably smell stuff. This takes away the horrors, this process. And so all in all, it's just a win-win-win for the dairy farmer. But what is biogas? Let me just talk a little bit about the chemistry here. Biogas is a combination of carbon dioxide and methane. Mostly methane, 60% methane, 40% carbon dioxide. And you all know that carbon dioxide or any kind of carbon heats up our atmosphere. But methane is much worse. It's 84 times worse than carbon dioxide in the short term. So it heats up our atmosphere even more so. So the idea here is to capture the methane. That's the goal. How can we capture the methane? Produce it in renewable energy, not let it go to the atmosphere to begin with. And overall, of course, we are reducing the footprint of the dairy farm. So in the anaerobic digestion process, the one other thing people talk a lot about, carbon intensity. I don't know if you've heard of it. How much carbon uh, are we emitting into the atmosphere when we are burning, let's say. So one of the metrics we use, and this graph is just showing you the greenhouse gas effect when we burn diesel, we are emitting a lot of carbon or <coughs> greenhouse gases, increasing intensity. And we are coming up with better strategies to reduce the carbon intensity of the fuels that we are producing. However, the piece that is really interesting is that, <laughs> they're not aligned here, but the food waste actually reduces the carbon intensity. And this is the manure that really reduces the carbon intensity. So by using this, we are actually reducing the carbon intensity of the fuel that we are using. So just, just as a comparison, solar and wind, everybody talks about zero carbon intensity. They're not emitting any greenhouse gases, which is great. Um, we need that. This biogas system actually reduces the carbon intensity. So that's the further benefit. There are very few technologies that reduce the carbon intensity. Um, we need everything. We need wind, we need solar, but we also need this biogas to further expedite the reduction of greenhouse gases. So the trends in fruit-based um, are that, yes, we are making a lot of progress. In 2017, there were only a few states that were actually um, diverting the food base from landfills. There are laws that are coming up. And so we went to Massachusetts and California and Connecticut but in 2019, there are more states that are doing it. And now actually, in 2022, there's New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania is still not there, we're getting there. But most of the Northeast has actually put, it, put out the laws to divert the food waste from going into landfills. So, one other thing that I just wanna quickly say, I think when you go to a grocery store and you see a lot of food waste, let's say a, a refrigerator goes off, you have Pack, you have to have packaged food waste. And we have to find ways to put packaged food waste into our system. And we were able to install a system that could actually separate out packages and squeeze out the organics. And we, we were able to install it and show how we can actually reduce the food waste, not only just liquid food waste, but also packaged food waste, all sorts of food waste. And so we're making progress. We're making progress, Massachusetts being one of the pioneers in this, have actually shown that a lot of um, sorry, a lot of our systems are actually sh showing that we can actually digest a lot of food waste in anaerobic digestion, and a lot of new anaerobic digestion facilities and repackages are coming on. A lot of work is being done, and so this, these are our facilities in different places. We are producing uh, about 1.5 megawatt electricity right now, and going up to about three megawatts electricity by the end of this year. So in conclusion, 
I just want to talk about a little bit about the New York scoping plan that gives you a perspective of where the greenhouse gases come from. So they talk about sectors that emit greenhouse gases. And using the biogas, we are actually making sure that we capture the fugitive methane from the agricultural, from the manure. We also capture the fugitive methane from the food waste. We reduce the uh, carbon intensity of the electricity we're producing, and we reduce the carbon intensity of the, um, the renewable natural gas, which goes into the transportation sector. And so we are targeting lots of different things that actually create greenhouse gases. And so this is uh, offered to the students as you go into your next journeys of trying to do whatever you want to do when you grow older, join this industry, help get into the clean fuels and clean energy. Um, I think it'll certainly be something that is going to be up and coming and we need a lot of people engaged in it.